Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. What are you doing? Working. You don't sound it. Why don't I sound it? Oh, I don't know. Humming and fidgeting around. You just don't sound like a man working. (laughs) Besides, you're awfully willing to be interrupted. That I was interrupted in my train of thought does not indicate willingness. It uh, merely indicates that I was interrupted. Mm. What do you want? Nothing. (laughs) Then you weren't working. You were only thinking. So I really didn't interrupt your working. I was thinking about working. Oh. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Mm, A wonderful day. There are clouds over on the horizon, though. It might rain later. Do you think so? Mm-hmm. Well, that'll be perfect. With Gertrude doing the wash, it'll be perfect for ducks. Uh, for trout, too. That sounds silly. What difference would it make to a trout whether it rains or doesn't rain? He'll be wet in either case. It seems to make a great difference to the big ones. Just before rain, they sort of sense it and stare around, and sometimes you can catch the wily old fellows. Ugh. What? On your desk there, I thought it was alive. (laughs) Oh, it's a fishing fly. (laughs) It's a quill gordon. You mean there are different kinds? Well, there are about 600 different kinds. 600? And this particular one would be just about perfect for the smart old trout that Roger and I came on the other day. He was having absolutely none of us. We used every trick of the trade on him, and it didn't work. He nuzzled Roger's fly and spit it five feet in the air. He just swished his tail at me. This sounds very personal. It is. I always thought men just went fishing for fish, not just one particular fish. Do you know what I think? I have the foggiest idea of what you think. I am thinking that you are wasting your time with that far away look in your eye and the Biff McDonald. <laughs> Quill Gordon. There's no fly called Biff McDonald. Although the name sounds like it might be a good idea. Now you're interrupting me. I was just about to tell you what I was thinking. You told me. You said I was wasting my time. Oh, you interrupted me before I got finished. Oh, sorry. What I was trying to say is that you're wasting your time trying to work. In my candid opinion, you ought to go fishing. Oh, but my work. Do it later. Get thee behind me, Satan. And push. (laughs) (laughs) No, I really think you should go. Hmm. You do? Yep, I do. Well, since you insist. I insist. But it's much against my will. Come here. Why? (laughs) Because I want to kiss you. Mm -mm. There's much to be said for trout fishing. Come with me and be my love, and we will some new pleasures prove. On golden sands by crystal brooks, with silken lines and silver hooks. That's nice. Anne Dunn thought so, too. Who's Anne Dunn? She was the beloved wife of John Dunn. And one summer morning, about 330 years ago, she prevailed upon John to go fishing. Oh, very much against his will, too. Did Anne go, too? That the poet did not tell us. But he asked her, come with me and be my love. Well, I'm waiting. Would you really like to go? I'll be very quiet. All right. It's a deal. And on a bright summer's morning in 1948, Claudia, the beloved wife of David, went a-fishing. Oh, a-fishing we will go, a-fishing we will go, a-high over the dairy, oh, a-fishing we will go, a-fishing we will go, a-fishing we will go. Pool's just beyond that clump of thicket over there. This is like stalking big game in Africa. There's more to this than meets the eye, isn't there? And the less that meets the trout's eye, the better. <laughs> now, just over there. Where? Around that bush. I see see the glen of water Where? right through there. Oh, yes. Uh-oh. Do you see what I see? A barefoot boy. With a fish pole and a string of fish. Maybe he won't mind your fishing the pool with him. Fisherman's ethics. The pool belongs to the first man on it. Ethics? And a 12-year-old boy? Well, ethics have to begin at some age in life of man. So they do. And if I'd been here first, he would have respected my priority. Oh. 
Or you'd have taught him some ethics. <laughs> anyway, he's probably banged around so much the fish wouldn't bite again today anyway. This could be a tender point of ethics. Oh, hello, son. How's luck? Oh, I caught this here string. Oh, quite a collection. Mm. Just about one of everything there is. <laughs> Sunfish, a perch, a chub. And a bullhead. You didn't catch all of them here, did you? No, I caught these in the little pond across the road. And um, what do you expect to catch here? Oh, I'm not expecting. I've got over-expecting. So young <laughs> to be disillusioned. There's trout in this here pool. Really? And there's one great big one. He's a sockdology. You don't Ooh. say. He's all of 15 inches. Mm. I'll go uh, along with you on that, but I bet he's close to 20. You know him, then? Oh, my husband knows him intimately. I don't know him as well as you do, son. Well, I discovered him last year. I come here all the time, but nobody's caught him. I know two men who spent an afternoon and didn't catch him. <laughs> It'll take a real fisherman to catch this here fish. Mm, experience has brought me to agree with you. But you were trying. No, nah, I just come here to look at him. But you're fishing... Just on the chance? No. I got a worm down there, but I'm not fishing for that big fish. I might catch some silly small trout, but that big fella, he won't be took on no worm. He won't, eh? Uh, what would you suggest for the big fella? You wait around a minute or two, and he'll show you what I would suggest. There's a hatch on. A hatch? A hatch of flies, lady. Oh. Maybe with just a hint of blue in them, huh? Just a little blue. Like, uh, like this one, maybe? Gee, ain't that pretty? That's a humdinger of a fly, mister. A humdinger to catch a sock dollager. <laughs> It'll take more than just having a fly before you have this fish. This here fly'd have to float down through the air without a splash on the water. And if it was dropped just right... That's a pretty big if, son. This is a pretty big fish. And if it was just right, he wouldn't take it like no ordinary trout. He'd look at it and size it up. And then, just for the heck of it, because he ain't hungry, he'd flip up through the water and take it from on top. I can see you know this particular trout pretty well. Uh, just where would you put this fly? Just over there at the edge of that slack water beyond the eddy. Mm -hmm. You just watch there. He's there all right. There's a swirl on the water. Well, that's him, lady. Now wait. There he is. Now, there he was. A real sock dollar. With shoulders on him like a steer. <laughs> all right. Go ahead, mister. Try and catch him. You sound like you hoped I wouldn't, son. No, I hope you do. If you catch him, you're a good fisherman. And that fish belongs to a good fisherman. My dad would have caught this fish. Your dad? Yeah, he, he was sort of hurt in the war and he died. Hmm. And not having a fly rod, a fly line, nine foot of very fine leader, and a quill gordon, this trout is sort of... Out of your reach. Well, even if I did have, I, I wouldn't catch that there fish. You mean you wouldn't want to? No, I mean, I wouldn't have the know-how to cast it just right. Oh. Now, my father, he... Hey, mister, what are you doing breaking the hook off that fly? You won't catch no fish without a hook on your fly. Yeah, I've got another fly. Just now, I'm getting ready to catch some uh, know-how. Some what? Some know-how. Come on, let's get back here in this meadow, out of sight of the pool. You're going to cast from way back there? Yep. We're going to do some casting, some dry casting. And I've broken the hook off so we don't snag it up in the grass. In the grass? Mm. There is method in, uh, shall I call it my madness? Gee, mister, this rod is a... A, a humdinger? That's right, a first-class <laughs> humdinger she is. You're something of a first-class humdinger yourself, darling. Now, come on back here in the field, son. Okay. Now, hold up the rod this way. Like here this? Here you go, yeah, get it with this hand. Okay. Now, bring it back. Uh -huh. Not too far, not too far. Now, now with your wrist, not with your arm. David, it's starting to clod up a bit. All right, darling. Now, come on, son. Let's get back to the pool. Uh -huh. Now, I'll put the fly on uh, with a tent of blue. Now, now put your fly behind that eddy. Uh -huh. All right? All right, son. Now, make your cast. Well, look, mister, maybe you better do it. Only a real fisherman's going to catch this fish. Well, if you catch him, that'll make you a real fisherman. Well, all right. Here goes. All right. Let it go now, just like I showed you. I did it. You'll never make a better cast. Now, don't move that fly. Now, easy now. now. Take in a little of that slack line. That's it. That's it. Pull it in just a little bit more. It's now or never. It's now. And it, it's now. You caught him. Strike, strike. He's on. Well, what'll I do? Now, keep your line taut. Don't give him any slack. Okay. Now, he's turning. He's heading this way. Now, now reel him in. Uh -huh. Come on, reel him in. 
That's it. Take your time. Don't get nervous now. Don't get nervous. Let now go. watch him dance on his tail. He's huge. He's the great granddaddy of them all. Now in with him. Okay. Come on, bring him in. Bring him in slowly. Now don't get nervous, son. Okay. Don't get nervous. Now, now don't give him his second win. That's that's the boy. That's the boy. Now, now into the shore. Come on, bring him in now. Bring him in. Bring him in. Over here. Over here for the net. Get him. Gee. I get him. Well. Well, fisherman. You caught yourself a fish. He's better than 20 inches. Gee, I couldn't say it more perfectly myself. Gee. Uh, Wait till I show the fellas down at the corner store. Wait till I show my mom. <laughs> Gee, thanks, mister. You're a real sport. My dad never caught a fish as big as this. <laughs> You're quite a sportsman yourself, son. And with that fish, that fish, you can prove it to anybody. Your dad would have been proud of you. Well, I can't wait to show it. Well, you run along now and show it to your friends and to your mom. I don't forget what you showed me. My old dad couldn't have shown me how better. Gee, thanks, mister. Are you going to fish some more, David? No, I think the fishing's done for the day. But there are other fish in the stream? None quite so big. He was the one I was after. You just let that little boy catch him. Well, I had my fun out of it. The fish really belonged to him. He discovered him over a year ago. And I discovered something a year ago, David. Mm, what? I discovered the most wonderful father my son could ever have. I never really knew how wonderful until I saw you with that little boy. Well, darling, that sort of makes up for the trout. Kiss me again, and I'll tell you something else about my son's father. Lady, consider yourself kissed. He's a humdinger of a sock dollager. Oh, according we did go, according we did go, high over the dairy, oh, according we did go. Remember the days when people heaped the table high with food and a housewife had to work the live long day in order to prepare for guests? Well, I think there's more than one thing to be said in favor of today's casual entertaining. It's simple, it's informal, and everyone seems the better off for it, including the hostess and her pocketbook. Nowadays, you just go to the refrigerator, take out a tray full of Coke, open the bottles, and there you are. And any time, any place, Coke brings you the pause that refreshes. Hi there, Mr. King. Why, hello, son. Say, that's a pretty big fish you've got there. That's a trout, Mr. King. Did you catch him all by yourself? Well, I had a little help, you might say. That, that fellow who just moved up here, Mr. Norton, let me use his rod and his fly, and he taught me some know-how. And, and uh, what? And... Together we sort of caught this fish. Well, that's pretty generous of you to share the credit for a fish like that. I guess he taught me something about being generous, too, Mr. King. He could have caught this fish by himself, but he let me do it. Say, Mr. King, I heard Mrs. Norton say something about their son. He wouldn't be about my age, would he? Well, in a manner of speaking, their son uh, isn't yet. But he'll be along in a week or two. But before he gets here, David is going to have some real boy trouble on his hands. Young Jeffrey Killian, his partner's son, has some troubles bigger even than that fish of yours. Oh, nothing could be bigger than this fish. Well, they seem bigger to him. Hang around next week. Maybe you'll meet young Roger. Okay, Mr. King. I'll be seeing you. Goodbye, son. I'll be seeing you. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These programs star Catherine Bard as Claudia and Paul Crabtree as David. And the entire production is supervised and directed... By William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>